Okay, so let's talk about IFRS 9, talk about the major facts uh, with respect to IFRS 9. Uh, so the first fact is that it was issued in 2014. It was used issued to replace IS-39 and uh, it became effective from year 2018 and uh, it is applied retrospectively. Applied retrospectively means that for companies that used to prepare using IS-39, they had to go back as far back as possible to restate their financials in order to align with IFRS 9 so that the comparative financial statement in year 2019 will align with that of year 2018. And so that's pretty much what happened when IFRS 9 came into play in, uh, in 2018. So just like the way uh, the ISB does with accounting standards, what happens is that each accounting standard always comes with two additional documents. The first one is the basis of conclusion and the second one is the illustrative example. So basis of conclusion tries to explain each of the items that are on the accounting standard itself. While the illustrative example creates scenarios, I mean practical scenarios that discusses uh, how to apply uh, the context and the concept in the standard. And majorly, IFRS 9 impacts all businesses because almost all business, in fact, I don't think there's any business that does not have to deal with cash. And so for any business that to deal with cash, it most likely means that they have financial instruments in their books. And so IFRS 9 impacts all financial instruments and it is not only for banks alone. Okay, so let's talk about the applicable standards for financial instruments. Uh, aside from IFRS 9, the other standards are still in effect that accompanies IFRS 9. Uh, one of them is IS32. So IS32 talks about how to present uh, your financial instrument in terms of your liabilities and equity, how to be able to distinguish them. And it also talks about offsetting, whether you need to offset uh, your financial assets against your financial liability. So for example, if you have a trade receivable with a particular customer and the customer is also a vendor to you, meaning that you have a trade payable to that same customer, do you net the balances or do you present them separately on your financial statement? So IS32 helps to address the issue of offsetting of financial uh, instruments. Another standard that is important that is applicable to financial instruments is IFRS 7. So IFRS 7 basically deals with disclosure requirements. That is, what are those significant items that need to be disclosed in the notes to the financial statement about financial instruments. Another item that is important is with respect to risk. I will talk about credit risk, market risk, liquidity risk, and so many other risks that are attributable to financial instruments. So IFRS 7 talks about how to effectively disclose them, including sensitivity analysis as well. And uh, the last one is the major one itself, which is IFRS 9, which is the big boy of uh, our financial instrument standard itself. And so IFRS 9 talks about the how to report financial assets and liabilities, the timing involved. It talks about classification and measurement. And so as we mentioned earlier, each of those standards that we've listed in terms of the IS32, the IFRS 7, the IFRS 9, they all have the standard itself. They have an accompanying basis of conclusion and they also have an illustrative example. So basis of conclusion explains the standard while the illustrative examples gives practical scenarios that addresses them. I've attached those uh, documents to this particular uh, section for you to take advantage of. So I'll see you in the next video.